Hi, it's Lucas from Jira for the People blog, and today I invite you to listen and watch the podcast which I recorded with Alex Ortiz, who is the creator of an enormous amount of uh, Jira related YouTube content and other stuff. And his goal is to have an answer for every possible question uh, in the Jira related field. So, for example, when somebody in the future will write how to do X thing in Jira, his video will come up first. That's his goal and he's on his way to accomplish that. Unfortunately, during our talk, we had some connectivity problems. So I even tried to change the place, but it didn't help. So please forgive me for that. But I hope that you will find this talk as much interesting as I. Okay. Uh, hello, um, Jira for the People community. Uh, today's guest is uh, Alex. Alex Ortiz from uh, California. Hello, Alex. Hey, how are you? Hey, thanks, I'm fine. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation to be with us today. It's uh, morning, your time, I guess. Almost lunch, but yeah, it's a, it's a little early for the day. Yeah, yeah. My day is almost over. This is the last <laughs> thing that I will do today, uh, besides brush brushing my teeth. So, uh, yeah, good to have you here. And uh, first of all, um, I would like to ask you uh, what you do like for a daily basis. But, but before I begin with that question, I will tell uh, you and my and, and the Jira for the People uh, community uh, why uh, are you my guest? Because, um, you know, I also some somewhat active in uh, in Atlassian community. I have this blog and uh, some courses, materials for administrators. And I uh, one day, like a couple of months ago, I've been visiting some uh, forums on some groups on Facebook um, for Jira administrator, and I saw your video. And yeah, I thought, well, nice, the, another face in a, in a community uh, which I didn't uh, you know see before. And then I came the next day and there is another video of Alex. <laughs> and then I came another day and there is another video of Alex. And it, you know, it was like for a week. And I thought, wow, um, this is uh, pretty intense. I would like to know the story behind it because when someone puts so much energy into something, it has to be like the tip of the iceberg. So I <laughs> want to know what's, what's underneath that. So yeah that that was yeah, so, our first question <laughs> yeah so you hit me with a couple questions i'll start with the youtube stuff so yeah. uh, let's see i've been in the atlassian community since halloween so october 31st of 2016. 2016 well long yeah. time ago yeah so that was the first time i started out in jura uh server way back then don't yeah. remember the version i think somebody else once asked me the version but i just don't really remember Whatever, whatever versions were popular back in, I would say 2015, because the company I worked at, we were always at least one year behind at last year's latest releases for the server. Um, but yeah, so that's okay. when I first started. Um, my, my role into, or my journey into working on what I'll call agile project management tools like Atlassian, that actually started in 2013. I started off with Microsoft's version of like the, the server version of ADO, Azure DevOps, it was TFS back then. I don't know if they still use it today, mm -hmm. but that's where I first started kind of getting into like a Agile-based PM tool that allow you to plan your sprints and stuff like that. So if I do, I've been in this in this area for about 10 years, but specifically within the world of Atlassian, it's been a little bit over six years now. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, I used Jura as an admin. I was a, as an administrator for a, a really big company here in the United States. And I was just one of maybe five or six different Jira administrators. Um, my specific role was a DevOps engineer. So I actually didn't just use Jira, but we did the Bitbucket, Crowd, um, mm -hmm. pretty much the whole gamut, Con Confluence, everything else, um, for, to enable software engineers to basically track and, and, and execute and build products, right? So I did that for about three to four years. Then I transitioned away from service, like being an administrator to being a program manager. So 
Now I had to plan the work. Now I had to organize the teams. But I knew mm -hmm. so much about Jira fundamentally under the hood how it worked. So I naturally I was able to leverage Jira really, really well to be a very effective program manager. So I did that for about another three, four years of my career here. And hopefully we're up at six now. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. one day I decided to just um, just go deep and just just basically become a Jira administrator. I, I, I ventured a little bit to cybersecurity. I used to be certified as a certified ethical hacker and security plus, but it just got too scary for me. It was too overwhelming. Like once people started asking me for like harder and harder things, I, I kind of that imposter syndrome took over and I'm like, what am I good at? Like, what, what do I like to do? And I'm like, I like to do Jira. So I started mm -hmm. helping companies out with Jira. And, and so in 2021, <clears throat> middle of 2021, I mm -hmm. basically just went all in on just helping companies around the world configure, use, coach, whatever, whatever the requirements were, but just within the whole world of Atlassian, not just Jira. And so I did, I did that. So I was basically 12 hours a day, 14 hours every single day for like a period of like eight to nine months, just mm. Jira. <laughs> Nothing intense. Jira and Confluence, like all day. <clears throat> Again, as an administrator, right? As a coach, as a, as a, just helping people stand it up. And then I was like, well, one of the reasons why I had left kind of being an, an employee was like, hey, I wanted to start a YouTube channel. It was a dream of mine. I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel since 2014. And so mm -hmm. I was finally, I was, I was, it felt like the right time. I had found my niche. I had spent years studying and trying to figure out how do you create a channel? How are you, how are you successful on YouTube? And again, after three, four, five, six years of just studying, I'm like, mm -hmm. I finally found what I think I want to focus on. And that's Jira. <laughs> So I decided to record a few videos. If you go back and look at those original videos, they're like the worst things I've ever done. <laughs> but I took a leap and I and I recorded a few videos and then I published. And as you might expect, like nothing happened. <laughs> like my friends and family subscribed and everybody's like, what is this gyra stuff? And uh, it was a little <laughs> yeah. demoralizing, a little bit of a rock start. And so I officially launched a channel in December of 2021. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then fast forward, Fast forward to May, um, fast forward to May of 2022, um, which is probably around the time when you found me. Uh, yes. Because around the between, yeah, between May and September, I gave myself a challenge. I, I had about, coming into May, I had maybe 300 subscribers on the channel. Yeah. Uh, and, yes. Or five, 500. Uh, yeah, something like that. It, but it's yeah, like so three yeah, to five below, it, was, it was still very below low. 1, yeah, yeah. Very, very well below. And definitely well below the watch hours, too. And so I told my wife, I'm like, so my wife and I, we're the duo. We do this together. She's she's my editor. She does all the graphics and everything. I just, oh, I'm the Jira expert. <laughs> so so it's it's our little duo. <clears throat> and so, yeah, so between Memorial Day here in the United States, which is that last Monday of the month of May, and Labor Day in the United States, which is the first Monday of the month of September, it's mm -hmm. about 100 days. It's 98, but give or take, right? So it's about 100 yeah. days. And I'm like, this feels right. This feels like I wanted to do the summer of Jira. So every mm -hmm. day for those hundred days, every weekday, I decided to post one video <laughs> every single day for basically the whole summer. And that just shot it up straight up through the top. Like it was a lot of work. We learned a lot. We learned how to be more efficient, how to, how to put the videos at the right time when were people were watching, how to promote them. Um, how to answer a lot of questions and stuff like that. So that's probably why you started seeing me because every single weekday I was posting a video for a hundred straight days. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This, this is really impressive. Um, so thank you for that um, and for your answer. I got some uh, things um, that I uh, want to ask you like more. Um, first of all, you, you, you said that you ask yourself, uh, what do you like to do? And this is a like very important question, you know, because uh, probably every human being has this question inside, but uh, like not everyone dares to answer it, actually, uh, because it's like um, sometimes honest answer requires some changes in life. So uh, you need to, um, you know, <laughs> just be just be brave, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> what I've learned with that is. You, you have to be obsessed. Like if you want to be very successful with this, like you have to be obsessed. And 
And you can't be obsessed about something that you don't want to do or something that you don't like. But the beautiful thing about the internet today is that it doesn't matter what you're obsessed about. There's going to be somebody that wants to watch it. So even if you're obsessed with just collecting pennies, right? It doesn't matter at this point, right? TikTok or social media, somebody out there is going to like you have a shared mentality with you and will enjoy watching your content. And so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yes, yes, that, that's great. Okay, because um, I see, uh, apart from ob obsessity, which, which, uh, which you're telling me about, I there like it's something that you want to pass on to people like to, to to teach to educate right so what i think like like you said when you're obsessed with something somebody's gonna like that thing so it's like symbolically maybe uh, you are passing this fire of your passion to that person uh, so you know he can be inspired by you so i wonder uh if there was a person in your life uh, in this like topic who uh, just gave you this to to pass it on. So I will tell you. So so yeah, that that is something I did think a lot about. Um, they say when when you're trying to build this this uh, any business really, you have to have like an avatar, somebody that you are trying to sell to, right? For YouTube specifically, I can't say that I created YouTube or I created my channel to inspire like future admins. Uh, one of the main reasons why I started it, it was very selfish, was I had watched the movie Onward. I don't know if you've seen the Pixar movie. It came out 2020, right? Pandemic, right at the start. Uh, it's, not, it's really, about, not really, but you can tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a Pixar movie it's for kids. And the premise of the movie, without spoiling it to anybody, is these little boys, one of the boys and main characters, never got to meet his dad. Doesn't, doesn't really have any memories of his dad, but he has an, an audio tape of his dad's voice. And he plays it over and over and talks to him. And so I figured, I just started thinking about like legacy and like long-term. I'm like, I have two boys. And, and I in 2020, in June of 2020, I had a kidney stone. And I went to the hospital. And I, th I thought I was going to die. I thought that was it. <laughs> I thought it was game over for me. I didn't know it was well, a kidney stone until they told me it was a kidney stone. But the act leading up to my diagnosis, um, I was like, I was like, this is it. Like, I'm never going to get to see my kids ever again or, or get to see anything ever again. I'm going to die. Serious. And so the inspiration for YouTube was, again, YouTube's never going to go anywhere long term, 30, like 50, 60, 100 years from this, this medium is going to be there for a long, long time. I was like, what better way to capture my thoughts, my, the, my thought process, the way I, I look at the world, the way I, I just perceive stuff. If not to just put it on YouTube and and hopefully my kids down the road will see it and they'll be able to like essentially still hear my voice, still see who I am, how I analyze data and how I navigated the waters, right? And hopefully inspire them in the future um, to start their businesses and stuff. Wow, this seemed not selfish at all. <laughs> not selfish at all. <laughs> I feel like it's a little selfish. I, I just want like AI at one point to just, be able to let my kids have a conversation with me because all my words have been spoken and they're on the internet. <laughs> uh, well, there was um, there was this idea about in a rather not so positive context in a, a series Black Mirror, I think. Um, I don't know if you, you've seen that series. I've heard uh, of the series, but I haven't seen it yet. I think it's on yeah, Netflix, right? That was like, yeah, the, the one guy just died in an accident you are still alive <laughs> it was it was new <laughs> so yeah but but his uh, girlfriend just decided his like substitution um like they collected his data voice all of this and uh, the the phone her, uh, were, were calling her with his voice and they were talking and uh, it was really um yeah it's trippy i mean it's it's, it's, it's closer than yeah. you think <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but we are now nowadays we are stretching our imagination because <laughs> like AI came to the picture like uh, like uh, for the people, right? Yeah. AI for the people. Um, so they uh, yeah. feeding these algorithms and this you know this this beast. <laughs> Let's see <laughs> what's yeah. what, what will what will be the outcome of this. Yeah, and then uh, and then the second the, 
So the second reason why I did it, not really a, a who I did it for, but something I was trying to fill a gap in is a lot of the YouTube videos, maybe just in general related, but just general tutorial type of videos. Because I'm a software engineer background, right? I'm a software mm -hmm. engineering background. And, and like these tutorials, like they'll show you how to do the hello world. And then they skip all the good details and they go straight to the end, <laughs> right? And, and you're like, ah, I, it doesn't show me how to do the middle part. And so I, yeah. one of my main focuses for my every tutorial that I have is I, they're short and succinct, succinct, but they show you every step. I don't intentionally cut anything out, right? Because I, I hate it when you read documentation or tutorials or whatever, and they skip over that one step that's going to make it all happen. Yeah, <laughs> and it's crucial. So that was one of the objectives too, is like, I wanted to just make tutorials for the community here that are actually helpful and, yeah. and based on real data. Okay, so about the the teaching, as you said that um, you were like while watching these tutorials and some uh, randomly put uh, stuff put it on the internet, you're missing this one crucial part, and uh, I think it's like um, you get you, you you need to put people through the whole process so they can um, fully understand this, like you do with uh, children probably. Because uh, you can tell children what you want, like you can uh, ex you can tell them all the rules, but they won't, you know, uh, behave according to the rules yeah. at all until they understand why, right? Like you you have to do this because 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 and try it yourself, and then you will learn. So, yeah, um, th this is another reason why I think this uh, the, the the teaching is a mission. Uh, you know, um, so what what you like about teaching them? I like, so <clears throat> I, again, I, I've given that a lot of thought as well. But one of the things that I like is I and I, I, I maybe this I, I, I think I might have just much selfishness in me, right? But if you look at the video, I one of the things that I try to convey in every video is the energy and passion that I have for the technology. Mm -hmm. So I love Jira, <laughs> like legitimately obsessed about it, right? And and when I when I'm teaching, when I'm when I'm articulating my thought process, one of the main things that I really, really try to that I strive for each in each and every video is to make sure that, that audience is this, I'm not not I'm not just making the video to explain how to do step A, B, C, D, and E. Right. Like, I try to go deeper into like Here's how you do it, but this is why you want to do it. This is why you don't want to do it, or this is why, why this is a good idea, or this is why this is a bad idea. And I try to reach back into like elements of like why I find it useful, things that it's gotten me out of situations or, or scenarios where I found it beneficial. But I try to like radiate that out, right? I try to like the, you hear it in the enthusiasm in the video, that you hear it in just the way I I articulate about the subject matter. Because I love this stuff, and and that's I think that's one of the things that I love about teaching is that I get to express my thoughts, my emotions, my feelings, my knowledge with folks, and and the feedback I usually get is like, wow, this is really good. Like this is way different than just listening to somebody in a very monotone, very dry. Yeah. Here's how you do it, <laughs> type of video, right? Yeah. And so like I think that's one of the things that I really really like about teaching uh, from this aspect. The other thing that I haven't really been able to do too much on this channel, but something that I love personally about teaching is reaching that like that younger generation, right? reaching the youth. Because prior to me being on YouTube, from the year of 2014 through 2019, take that back, from 2014 to 2016 timeframe, those two years, um, I used to run a K through 12 program for one of the companies that I worked at which is kindergarten through 12th grade, basically grade school here in the U.S. And I would teach kids how to think like engineers, how to, how to just oh. be, how to be problem solvers, critical thinkers, right? Um, and, and how to just try to solve something and how to, how to, how to work through a problem. And I really like that aspect. I really like, um, I think I, there is no, to teach, one of the things that I found was when I, when I came so I used to live in St. Louis, Missouri when I was doing this. But when I came back to California from 2016 through basically 2020, when the pandemic started, 
every year I tried, I went back to my elementaries, I went back to my schools, I was talking to my old teachers, volunteering my time to, to help these students, right, in underrepresented areas that I grew up in, learn how to think like an engineer, learn how to critically solve problems, right? But every time, every attempt that I had was, there's no budget, there's not a priority, you're not a teacher, so you're not qualified to teach, right? And I'm like, well, why, do, why am I going through here when I have the power of the internet and there's YouTube <laughs> and there is no barrier to entry here, right? You just need a camera and a microphone and you basically teach anybody how to do anything. So that's, that's some of the other things. And the fun fact, mm -hmm. um, prior to me launching the ATEC tech tutorials with just the YouTube, uh, sorry, with the Jira videos, my wife and I did scratch tutorials, which is how to code using like I, UI instead of coding. And so we actually have had a channel since that we started since the early 2020 that we were basically teaching kids how to program in, in that scratch interface. And so it's just teaching has been something that we've been trying to do. And again, it's, it's just, I just love it because you don't need all the certifications and and all the details that you need to actually teach professionally in, a, in a, like a school setting, but still be able to reach millions of people around the world and, and being able to help them yeah. get better. Yeah. I Long with the answer. Where... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's where responsibility comes in. Uh, because yeah, w w people, I think people can um, see that when some, of course they can see that when some, somebody is uh, passionate about something and when he cares about them, when, when you, when you are uh, patient enough and you know, you, you um, if you really want them to understand thing, they, they can feel that. Um, yeah. So they, they feel taken care of. I think, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, but that was not uh, the easy way, uh, as far as I think you, 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 um, you said that you went all in, in that, uh, you know, style of, let's say, um, building your branding and building a brand and, and, you know, building your business around Jira. So. Um, I, I, I read that you, um, that I, I will quote that, uh, this, um, building your own company is like having a emotional roller coaster, right? <laughs> you wrote that. And this is, you know, um, tell me more about this. What kind of emotions arise oh, when you are struggling with, you know, with what you are struggling actually? Yeah, no, definitely. So. So that that is a very deep question, and I'm I'm bringing up, nobody's ever asked me. So um, this business that that I'm doing here is very much just my wife and I. we're both engineers. We both met in college. We both have like-minded interests. We've all been coworkers because even working in the industry, we work for the same companies doing the same similar thing. So we've always been not not the same team, not the same department, but always in the same industry, same company. And so we both kind of just at one point quit our jobs. And we decided to just take a chance on, our, on ourselves. And so the emotional roller coaster aspect of it comes in. It is like the amount of effort that I put into YouTube and, and just creating the content. It's an it's a significant amount, right? It, I mean, I'm up at 5 a.m. every single Saturday and Sunday morning recording the content. And then my wife spends a good, I don't know, two, three, four hours editing everything, making sure we're, we're creating thumbnails, we're creating the keywords, we're creating, um, for just the 2023 plan, we're, we're planning on publishing 150 videos and 750 vertical uh, short, like short TikTok mm -hmm. format or videos. And that's a lot of content to push through on top of yeah. courses and everything else, right? And so the emotional roller coaster aspect of it comes is like, we'll go through the effort to put something out and then the crickets hurt <laughs> like when nobody when nobody engages when nobody likes like it's just it's a really tough thing right so i have a vision of where and how i want to get to but then mm, putting it out there and then not seeing the result that i'm expecting is tough like it is just mentally like it hits you hard and and when you don't have i'm i'm just winging this whole thing right i've never built my own business before have a mentor i don't have anybody that's been through this journey before 
And it's just, it's hard because like sometimes I'll just sit here and it's just like, I don't want to say the most in state, but it is like, it's in a state of like, should I be doing this? Like, is this like, is this ever going to, am I ever going to get hit the numbers and targets that I'm going to get to? And so it's like, at sometimes I'll like, I'll second guess my whole, like the whole process and, and my wife sounds like, is my soundboard, right? She'll come back in and go, no, we got this. Like, it's just going to take time and consistency. And so it's just a, but then sometimes we'll like, we'll hit it, right? Like we'll publish a video and it takes off and like, it's a, we're writing an emotional high of like, wow, it's, it's working. And then we'll think and like, it's not working. And it's just like a constant, like it works. It doesn't work. It works. It doesn't work. And just trying to understand the data and algorithms. And it's just like, it's a very, very emotionally taxing thing because I'm like, this is my baby, right? I'm producing this, um, this, this thing, even though it's still not technically a product, right? But this, the channel, this brand eventually will be like a product, right? And, um, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you have like the, your goals and you want to get there. And like, you're, you're like, you the amount of effort I'm putting in to try to get there. But I just can't, like, I feel like sometimes I just can't dig myself out of the hole. But then sometimes I'm like, I feel like I'm accelerating, but it's just, that's why it's like, it's a roller coaster of just emotions. Cause sometimes I'm like at writing the top and other times it's like, I'm about to quit because <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> and it, it never ends probably. I mean, it, uh, you can get used to it, but yeah. <laughs> I tell people that this, so this is not something for everybody. Like you have to be okay with like people on the internet trolling you. You have to be okay with, with mean people, right? That's just one part of the aspect. Yeah, of it. Jealous ones. Yeah. And, and then you have to be okay with just things not going to the plan. And, and luckily I'm, I'm in an agile world, right? So it's all about pivot, pivot, pivot. So <laughs> I'm pivoting a, a, as the data is coming in, but you, you have to have this intense amount of perseverance. And I, I'll keep using the word obsession because you have to want this. Because if you don't, if you don't want it enough, like the first time you hit that first roadblock, many quit and they'll just stop. Yeah. Like you have to keep going. <laughs> this is the true inspiration, you know. Um, thanks for that. Um, I hope that this internet uh, connection won't ruin uh, this <laughs> beautiful message there. So yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, capture but in the, the, in the captions. <laughs> yeah, um, you are hitting the numbers. I I saw that you are you you have many goals, but uh, one of one of them was uh, to hit the three thousand before the end of year. You yeah. Did it? Now we have all uh, subscribers on YouTube. This is, you know, really something. And you are uh, explicitly telling that this is the number one uh, Jira channel on YouTube. <laughs> this is, you know, great thing to, to say. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very numbers driven, right? I'm an engineer. Um, and so yeah. when, when I started the channel in December 2021, I had zero expectation that this was going to do anything because like i said i have a, a different channel on on the scrap tutorials and here we are two almost three years later and we still haven't even hit the thousand subscribers so i had i had zero expectation of doing anything so it wasn't until that that hundred day of summer i was like you know what i'm gonna take it very serious let's do let's monetize my goal my entire goal for the summer was monetized by labor 100 days and monetize that was the mm -hmm. only reason I did all the live streams and uh, posting every day because it was get get those two metrics that YouTube wants in order to monitor, which is the thousand subscribers and the four thousand hours. So that was my obsession for that time. Then the rest of the year was let's try to. I didn't know where it was going to go. I once I hit a thousand, I thought that was it. Like I thought we were just going to stop. But once it, I saw that it kept growing, I was like, well, let's shoot for three thousand. And so I finished the year three days, two or three days before the year ended, hitting the goal. And so I was like, well, mm -hmm. let's set the goal. So the new goal is for 10,000 for the end of this year. But the, the, where I'm going with this is like, um, I just, I wasn't expecting these numbers, right? Like I set these targets, but I don't know how, if, the, if people would subscribe or, or if anybody's even going to watch. <laughs> well, if you say it aloud, if you say it out loud, 
uh, to the people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, uh, the magic can happen there. I do find that I start. I'm starting to get to the point where um, there's a there's an influencer here in San Diego. His name's Pat Flynn, and he wrote a book called Friends. And so I am starting to find as I'm as I'm growing this audience and users here, that I'm starting to find folks. My supervisor, they're there in every live stream. They they comment on the videos. They're like the folks that are just supporting me on this journey. And I try to be as transparent as possible. I try to share as much of like the growth with the community as well. Because mm -hmm. just in case there's somebody out there, there's so much there's so much to cover. I legitimately have about 350 videos in my backlog, right? On just Jira. <laughs> I want to do videos on Jira service management. I want to do videos on Jira product management or product discovery. I want to do videos on Jira work management. I want to do videos on Confluence. I want to do videos on Bitbucket, right? Just expanding within the Elastic ecosystem. Just in Jira, I have 350 videos, ideas, and I can only I only have time for 150 of them. So I'm like, I'm hopefully, I'm inspiring other people to come and jump into the space. And and also at, at Lasting changes the, the, their products every day, right? So every yes. day there's new features, new videos to make. So I'm yeah. hoping that as people are watching this, right? It's it's doable. It is it's it's something that is achievable, but it is a lot of work. Consistency though will get you really far. Tell me more about this fear of rejection. Yeah, so rejection has just been a constant pattern with me. I just I've never I hate asking for directions i hate asking for help i hate asking for anything because i don't like I've, I've always just been afraid of people saying no and so about the end of last year november time frame of last year i listened to a um a, a podcast with shamath pali hapitiya he's one of the first um executives at facebook he now runs like a, a, a multi-billion dollar a venture capitalist firm in Silicon Valley. And when I was listening to him, he he said something really interesting. He said something about like rejections and, and failures. Because up until November, like a failure, a setback, like it just profoundly hit me, right? Like I just don't know how to deal with them very well. And his perspective enlightened me. It got me thinking about um, lessons learned, right? Because as an as the agile practitioner that I am, right, when you do your sprint retrospectives, it's about that lessons learned. It's about getting that feedback and figuring out what went well, what didn't go well, and what can you improve. And I've always been practicing this for the last 10 years. And I'm like, well, why, why can't I apply that to the failures? And so I started, I shifted my mindset recently within the last few months again, where Shamath basically said, every time that he does something and it doesn't go according to plan, he doesn't see it as a failure. He just sees it as a, he paid X amount of money to get feedback, to then figure out how do you work, how do you pivot for the mm -hmm. next time, right? Um, fortunately for him, his his feedbacks are like he spends two, three million dollars on an idea, and if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So I'm like, well, at least my failures aren't costing me money out of my pocket, but they they kind of sting, right? So I've been intentionally kind of putting myself out there. So now I'm like, when I go to a restaurant or something, I'm asking people for stuff. I'm intentionally trying to get rejected. So that I can just get used to it. So because I just I feel like I feel two different things. One, if you don't try, like you won't know, right? Like it's yeah. so it's the the best way of dealing with these rejections is just try it. Eventually, you get numb to it. And second, all throughout my career, I noticed that the people that asked for stuff got what they wanted, and because I was always afraid afraid of getting the no. I never asked for the promotions. I never asked for the raises. I never asked to be put on the projects that I wanted to work on. I just did what they told me to do because asking was too scary. <laughs> and so I'm in this, I'm in this new, like after listening to Shamas, right, of this new way of just like, I'm just asking at this point, right? Because getting the no's is not, it, while it's still, I, I'm still learning through it, um, those rejections are not as bad. Right? They're not as bad as I, I feel like I've let them be for my whole life. And so I'm like definitely in a lot more opportunist way, if you will, <laughs> where I'm just, my wife and I were trying things. We, 
we're investing. We buy a tool to see if it's gonna, <clears throat> we buy like an editing tool to see if it'll make our lives easier. It costs $150, it's a lot of money. It might not work, but I'd rather spend that money and, and see if it works, but not just see it as, a, as an investment to a lesson learned mm-hmm. than as a failure of like, oh, we just wasted $150. So we shifted our mindset like that ever so subtly. And it just, it has changed our perspective and our outlook and, and how we approach the decisions that we make because now we're willing to make investments in, in the expectation, whether it's a good investment or a bad investment, there's going to be a lesson to it. And that's what we're going to do now with special respect projections and, and like mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah, so if you won't try, you never know. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so you need to constantly go uh, beyond your like comfort zone. It's it's uh, it's like cliche, but it's so simple and true. So people, you know, don't don't treat that uh, that serious. Actually, I think. Um, but it's hard. It is. It's it, a hard. It thing hard to do. It's hard to be vulnerable. Time. Yeah, yeah. I know. It is very hard to be vulnerable. And it's just like unless you're unless you grew up with this stuff. Unless you grew up like being vulnerable, like it's it's hard to do it, especially when there's like again the internet is just a mean place. Like YouTube, I don't yeah. think it's too bad. I think YouTube is a very um, the the I out of all the comments that I usually get on YouTube, I, I would say maybe less than one percent are usually somebody just like being mean or trolling or something. But like on other platforms, like on TikTok specifically, like on TikTok, I don't know if it's a generational thing, but fifty percent of the comments are just like people just trolling <laughs> like yeah. it's way different the, the same content but it's just way different like the the audiences in each in each platform yeah so i uh i will share a little bit of my story of overcoming this like fear of rejection because it's seem quite similar i always wanted to sing uh you know to play the guitar to sing songs uh, to write my own songs sing in front of the people it was like my I don't know some kind of a dream but you know i didn't know how to do it how to how to open and be relaxed at the same time because if you are not relaxed doing something people can see that and then you stress more and you know the performance is is worse so we need to be relaxed but how (laughs) yeah Yeah. i started to i started to because i was learning to play guitar and sing you know in my own room but I started to sing on the street and, uh, you know, to confront with the people reactions. But if um, I noticed that uh, if you are um, playing some role like street musician or like YouTuber or like somebody else, this is your role. It's uh, it is you still. But at the same time, you know, this is only a part of you and you are playing this role and uh, people you know react differently they uh, attitude changes and you can play with this somehow and you can be more open and then hopefully more relaxed so that's what i um that's my ideas about confronting the you know the reality let's say yeah no you just you gotta put yourself out there and do, again this is why you gotta do something you love to do because when you do wake up in the morning, like the adversity and all the challenges that are coming up against you, and then and then you know that that you have to do hard things, but it's easier. It's easier to digest it when again you you believe in your own mission. Because mm-hmm. if you're just if you're just trying to answer, like if I would have been in you, like if I would have said, hey, I'm creating this Jira channel, not to help people, not to express again my knowledge and stuff and expertise in the tool, but just to make money. Then second, that very first month that I would have made zero dollars, I would have been like, nope, that's it. Next, next, next item, <laughs> right? But like, I make ten dollars a day on a really good day. On average, it's like five dollars, right? And so, definitely not doing it for the money. <laughs> yeah, but it it hopefully it will grow, man, because you are creating opportunities, and uh, it's like this, this snowball with every turn, it gets a little bigger, and yeah, new, new yeah. opportunities comes. In in 2022, the focus was only YouTube. Like I obsessed again just on YouTube. We didn't do any TikTok. We didn't do any Instagram. We didn't do anything else but just just YouTube. Like that was the only thing that I did for the entire year. Once I 
that goal of 3,000 laps when like, I don't know if you've seen, but I have on my channel, I got the shorts now. I post those yeah. shorts on TikTok and on Instagram Reels. I got courses now and I'm developing, my wife and I were developing our very first plugin. So we're starting to diversify, but YouTube's kind of like a very well-oiled machine at this point for me, right? And so yeah. I intentionally, though, I knew that I was not going to be successful at all if I try to do everything I'm doing today a year and a half ago. Because yeah, it just you, wouldn't have worked you've out. Got your audience. You've got your audience yeah. now. But I had you can... patience, man, but that 12-month, 12, 12, 13-month patience yeah. is, again, you have to be disciplined and you have to want this. It's like I prepared a year, over a year, for the decisions that I'm doing today. Yeah, great to hear. Um, could you tell more about this plugin that you're making? <laughs> yeah, so so I've had so I had an idea to create a plugin for ooh, I want to say since like 2019. So it's been a few years now. Okay. 2019, early early 2020, like maybe January February 2020. I've been wanting to make this plugin where. I'm really, really big on diagrams. I'm really, really big on charting and, and like draw.io, Lucid Chart, great, great architecture and diagramming tools like Miro, stuff like that, right? I love it. I love drawing squares. I love drawing lines in between squares. Mm -hmm. Most of my, most of the way I operate in Jira is I take the tasks that need to be done before I put them into stories. I'm, I'm brainstorming with my stakeholders and I'm drawing squares and I'm drawing relationships. And I'm leveraging draw.io and, and like listen mm -hmm. charts and stuff like that, right? And now most recently Miro. But the problem is once I have my diagrams, I now have to go to Jira and create a ton of stories. Yeah. Right. And and you, the visualization of the stories is not as easy to visualize as the diagrams that I'm creating because my diagrams are colored based on their statuses. So the plugin that I'm trying to create right now is taking the di basically I'm recreating a very simple, right? I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put draw.io or lucid charts out of business, right? But I just want to be able to draw a square in a line because that's that's really all I need. But a diagramming tool that is calling then Jira's API so that I can show the status or push into Jira so I can create the stories automatically from what's on the drawing mm -hmm. and then keep the tools in sync. A good portion of my job then when I do this, when my method, I have to then be updated by the developers and by the team but then I have to go take those statuses and color change the colors on my diagrams, and so that's the app that I'm building on right now. Because again, a, a picture is a thousand words, and while my developers love stories, my stakeholders, the executives, directors, VP, CEO, CTOs, they love pictures, right? And so I am trying. That's the plugin in a sense, right? Where I'm just trying to like create it so that I can get the data sync back and forth. Yeah. It's a bit of a challenge. We've never read, we've never used Jira's documentation. The documentation is very, very subpar. <laughs> it's it's not designed for beginners. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this is a really good idea. Uh, it reminds me of some uh, sentence. I will. I need a translator to do that because uh, to 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 quote it's uh, from from uh, Polish like, to English. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let give me a while. Um, it really applies here. <laughs> FYI, this is the first time I publicly share the idea, right? I, I've been building the plugin, but nobody's ever asked what, what are we building. Um, one of many though, I have I have about four or five ideas brewing, but I just wanted to start with the one that I feel most valuable. Um, that I feel like again, I've been I'll use, I'm gonna personally use a lot. It's gonna be my job as like a scrum master program manager easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the quote. Uh, the best code is made when the programmer scratches where it itches the most. So like <laughs> this is what you need. This is what you need. Yeah. So you will write this and that's going to be good piece of code, I believe. The, the good piece of piece of, you know, plugin. So be be sure to to inform me so I can put the information on uh, the Jira for the people blog. Um, yeah, you know. I just gotta. We we're working through it. We've been we um we got a couple of interns. I got a couple of cousins that are computer science, and so they're helping okay. me build it. Um, so we're all learning through it. My wife's the lead. She's basically my software engineer here, and she's kind of leading the efforts. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been it's been something that I've been wanting to build for like forever, and we finally got to the point where we have YouTube kind of on a very well oiled machine, like. We have a, a an entire strategy 
we bulk edit, we bulk produce, right? So I can afford to spend four or five hours on a Saturday and take care of two, three weeks worth of YouTube videos. And that opens up time now for us to explore other avenues to generate um, additional sources of income. Yeah, it's it's beautiful thing that you um working with your wife you know this is uh like no the whole family's in it kids too yeah <laughs> kids are in it we're, we're really slowly teaching family the kids. business sorry yeah it's a it's a whole family, family business. business my 10 right? year old he's being we're we got we're making t-shirts right so we got like a little merch store where we, we have like i heart jira i don't know if you see some of the shirts on the videos but we're, we got the t-shirt so whenever the order comes in my son like he's in charge of handling the order um letting us know what materials we need and making the yeah. t-shirts packaging it up and then so we can mail it out and he's helping out now with the editing so that I, my wife can focus more on the coding and he's taking on some of the more easier edits and stuff like that and so we got the, mm -hmm. the we got the big one in that the little one he's he's only six so he's still very kind of small but he sees us all doing it so he's eventually going to join the family business but yeah we're we're trying to keep it here in the family and just like operate an entire like hopefully one day a, a multi-million dollar empire just at my living room <laughs> yeah that that's what i'm wishing uh, you um yeah you know there are so many things that i want to ask you uh i think we we need to just organize another meeting as a well part two. <laughs> like, yeah part two if if, if you'd like uh, this is like you know a lot of topics to cover um yeah just tell me um Uh, this is the beginning, almost the beginning of your day. So, uh, what's your plans for today? Like uh, any new videos or some other? Yeah. Stuff? So, so everything from respect to YouTube again is predetermined um, on Saturday, Sunday, right? On the weekends, everything out there goes. It's kind of like it's on schedule. So every uh, we post Monday to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are videos. So today's a Thursday. So there's no I don't have to worry about promotion or anything of youtube because there's there's no long form video um i have sh of shorts that i have to make sure that go out and i'll update the titles as appropriate because i'm reacting as as each video comes out i'm checking to see are, are people watching it do i have to update the title do i have to you know make the slight adjustments so that goes out 10 o'clock two o'clock and five o'clock pacific time so again so in a couple of hours i'm going to be watching that I'm try to engage just with the community. So I try to spend about an hour a day, usually in the afternoon, usually after lunch, after 12, 1 o'clock. That's usually when I'm, I'm hitting all this stuff where I'll go through YouTube. I'm oh, sorry. I'll go through YouTube, go through the comments. So I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I'm getting a lot of comments, uh, interactions with the videos. I'm answering questions. Um, I also, after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, this is usually when I open up my Calendly so that if anybody just want to jump on a 15-minute call, they can do that. So again everybody's going to kind of vary if i have a call or not um just to help people all right I, again i don't i tell people like oh i don't always just do it for the money because i legitimately like jira but i also don't want just everybody to bombard me because then i'm not gonna have any time <laughs> right but i try to help as many people as can and i'll give people 15 minutes and then if it takes more than 15 minutes then we can talk about like taking it offline right mm -hmm. um thursdays are a class day now so i do have a jira from the fundamentals class and i'm teaching zoom and so tonight is in a couple of hours i will be teaching for a couple of hours my my class in the, in the evening and then after that then it's about one or two hours of working with my team on this on the app so they're coding i'm a horrible coder i'm not writing a whole lot of code but i'm kind of i'm the product owner if you will right so I'm, I'm, we're in that mm -hmm. meeting kind of making getting the updates on on the latest development and and we're still in a very learning phase we're still in a can we get Jira to even talk to an API, right? We're still learning how to do all those things. So it's about one or two hours tonight of the same stuff where we're just building through, going through the app and, and trying to trying to get all that out. And, mm -hmm. and then just interacting on like LinkedIn and on Twitter, right? Just posting and talking to people and trying to be active in the community, trying to be valuable. Um, one of the things that I'm also doing now on the weekends is like guides, checklists, and playbooks. So one of the big strategies that I have, especially within, with respect to like LinkedIn and Twitter, is creating how to do something, but in a visual way. So mm -hmm. considerations for starting a Scrum project, considerations for 
planning your sprint, considerations for um, running your daily scrum, those kind of things, like just checklists, things that you got to worry about, or like guides with like arrows of like, hey, if, if this is happening, try this or try that. And then once you get here, try this or try that. So I'm just, I'm designing all those things. So again, my wife doing all the art part of it and me just kind of regurgitating the processes. And so that's, those are kind of the things that keep us busy in the afternoons. And then again, so because whole families involved, right? My kids are there. We're all at the dining room table. We're all kind of, it's a gift and a, right? Because it, it gives us the ability to do family time, but still be business time, right? Because the kids are part of it. So it's not like we're neglecting the kids, right? Which I think is what's really key. And I'm really, really jealous mm -hmm. of everybody that doesn't have kids that's trying to run a business because having mm -hmm. the kids is infinitely harder <laughs> to do than, than when you just, so we're fortunate that my kids are like nerds like us and like they're really, really excited about this stuff yeah. and they just want to be a part of it too. But yeah, that's kind of what my afternoons look like. Mornings are all Jira, just Jira questions, problems, um, work or whatever Jira problems I got to solve the day. Um, people just ping me all day long. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking about the same uh, thing. Like um, I was a little bit jealous of people that uh, you like don't have kids and try to do something uh, big. Uh, but I thought that, you know, when you have many things, many like uh, responsibilities, then you need to, you know, uh, plan better, optimize your time, like stretch your time better. And the time has like this um, higher value then. So, yeah. um, you know, so I, who knows? If, if yeah. you didn't have kids, maybe, um you know you you maybe not particularly you but you know wasting time on some other things <laughs> yeah no it, it does it does give perspective um so i do usually five to five to six p.m so of 13 hours a day and then after 6 p.m is usually from six to ten those last four hours of the day are usually we'll go out have a dinner or we'll make dinner or we'll watch we we try to binge watch shows together as a family as well um, so we'll do that. We'll we'll go out and run errands or whatever we want to do. But usually the last four hours plus, I would say, uh, so on my Saturday, Sundays, I usually do from 5 a.m. and about 9, 9.30, which is the time that the kids wake up anyways. But it still gives me a solid four or five hours of of getting stuff done Saturday and Sunday before the kids wake up. But usually from, from like 10 a.m. all the way until about, 5 p.m. is usually just the family, right? Like I to really not do too much on the weekends because mm -hmm. from that five, again, that 5 a.m. until nine that they're still sleeping, so my wife and I were hustling and doing all the edits and recordings. And, and it's also when the house is the most quiet, right? So I got to edit and record. So so it's, it's a, definitely a, a balance. Then every every once in a while, I'll, I'll visit my family. I, I visit my like parents once a month. So that weekend, it's shot. Like there's just no work. Like Maybe I'm doing a couple of just things here and there, like at, again, five o'clock in the morning, five, six in the, in the morning. But my parents wake up a lot earlier, so we usually go have breakfast and stuff. So, but at least one a month, it's like a week where it's just like I don't really worry too much about business. Um, I am, I'm hope that, but this is what we're also aggressively working right now because I want to get to the point where our our plugins bring us the money, the courses, because mm -hmm. because right now they're in person. But I'm recording them so I can put them onto like Udemy, Teachable, right? And the guy, all that stuff, right? There'll actually be books and stuff like that, right? So I'm hoping that the ebooks and the courses and and YouTube if I ever get it to that that scale that I wanted to, right? It's just all of these efforts combined. I'm hoping within the next, at least the next two to three years, makes it to the point where we do work a few hours a day, and the rest of the day just whatever we want. But we're we're That's, acknowledging that we're gonna work hard right now, and we're all making the sacrificial plays, with the expectation that there will be a day where this thing goes on autopilot for us. That's what I wish you for, man. Um, you know, it was really nice talking to you. I think we, uh, you know, I have like like I said, plenty of of subjects to ask you, uh, but I think we need to just make uh, another part. Um, <laughs> well, definitely, that would be, well, that would be great. Um, 
Yeah, because one one of the questions missing, but I, I think that the answer is going to be long. It's like, you know, you are doing all of that stuff because probably you um, left your job, uh, right? Right? <laughs> like uh, sometime before. So, um, yeah, so the risk. It's one, so I did do it. I'll try to answer it quickly, right? So I did leave my job in April 2021 to start. And that's kind of where I was still finding my footing. But my wife was 100% employed. So she okay. was, she had a stable career in, in a defense contract where you really can't get fired type of stuff. So I had that backing. I had that that confidence that with whatever happened with, like if with nothing panned out with me, that my we could still have, we still have my wife's check, right? Also, when I was in college, when I was in the university, my, one of my professors taught us never, ever, ever have your expenses exceed one of your checks. So all of my expenses between my wife and for my family are one of our checks only, not both. So because of that, like we we were always for the last, I've been married for 12 years now, 13, coming up on 13 years, right? So for the last mm-hmm. 12 years, we've saved half a check every day or every every month yeah. for the last 13 years so we got to the point where we could take a risk right we can we can do this and okay. and, uh, and be able to be able to do this comfortably obviously not living off of 11 dollars on youtube <laughs> right <laughs> but the courses like the courses that i just launched this last month like just with the students that i had they covered all my monthly expenses for the for the month that's great Right. So, so now it's just a matter of scaling and growing and and getting it better. Um, But yeah, that's that's actually how I'm able to take the risk. And I I, I have an, I live in the very expensive state of California, but we, we've been very, very smart with our money to the point where we knew that working in corporate America wasn't something we're going to want to do forever. And we knew that I want to build a company, but you, you kind of have to take a time out at one point in your life to do it because it's hard to do this if you're working 100%, right? Like it's Yeah, it's hard to do part-time. You have to sacrifice, yeah. In so, fact, um, I, this is something I haven't publicly shared with a lot of people either, right? But in June, July, in July of 2022, I got a full-time job offer to go with Google. Um, and so they offered me a, a job. But my wife and I sat there and were like, wait, so what does this mean? Because... Google works you, right? I'm going to work 12. I don't mind working 12 to 14 hours a day because every everything that I do directly results in a valuable impact for my family that I can control, right? Yeah. But when you work for somebody else, my contributions are to make the, the stakeholders rich, right? To make yes. shareholders and, and Wall Street and, and all those the revenues and stuff, right? So... So we talked about it and we're like, Google's going to work me 12, 14 hours a day, which basically means I don't do YouTube. I don't do courses. I don't, I won't have time for any of that, right? Because my life is going to be Google. And so we thought about it for a second. We're like, is this what we want? Do we believe in ourselves and what we're going to eventually build? And the answer was, yeah, we do believe in ourselves, right? So we're like, let's keep pushing through. And so fortunately, again, we have a very, very low cost of thing um, where we can live off savings and then i mean i'm obviously making money here, right so um uh, we're still in a very comfortable stage where we're not tapping into savings but yet we were the business is sustained enough where through her because she does like websites as well right so she'll have clients where she'll make mm-hmm. a website for somebody or she's like she'll design something right like she'll she's doing a couple of things here and there and then like a couple of courses here again they're covering our expenses so we're excited we're obviously we're very we're very bootstrapped right we're being very frugal about it but we're waiting for the day that it's just like it's just all on autopilot, right? And then it's just it's raining money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm wishing you, Alex. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. Um, as we said, we will do the the part two of this. Um, and for now, you know, have a have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate um, it, and thank you for staying up. And, um, yeah, whenever you want to talk again, I'd be happy to come back on and. And uh, thank you to your community for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking the time here. Hopefully, I, I know it's it was Polish is the, the main language, right, for the community? Uh, yes, but, you know, I have my blog in two languages. So, okay. you know, 
So hopefully on the English, I, I, I get too excited and I talk fast. So hopefully it was clear to everybody. It's okay. Uh, I'm I'm only worried about this internet connection, but next time, you know, I'm, I will be Next time you're bringing the wire with you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I, oh, okay. I will meet you in person in California. That will be I'm going to be in at, at the Alaskan Teams 23 conference in, in April in Vegas. So let me know if you're there. Okay. A couple uh, other... Vegas seemed great. <laughs> A couple of other folks in the community are getting ready to be there. So we're we're gonna try to do a live stream. We're gonna try to just I'm gonna try to do like a meetup or something. I'm I'm a small fish, right? I feel like there's other um influencers in the Atlantic community that are much bigger than me, but I think I'm the one that's the most consistent <laughs> with the content that I'm making. Yeah, yeah you are so, consistent. Thanks okay. again. Appreciate being thanks, here. Thanks. Okay.